liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing, I'm, I'm doing fine. <laughs> what you, what you drinking on tonight, Mike? I'm emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I so That's not generally something that people drink when they're doing fine. Like I well, I wonder if this is caught up with me finally. I I have felt fine all day, but I woke up at like three in the morning freezing. Yeah. In, in my bed. Um and like to the point that I got up and turned the, the heat up. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. And so when I got up out of bed this morning I took my temperature and it was like two degrees higher than normal. Yeah. Um it's Back, Even, yeah, it's yeah. back now. Yeah, yeah, it's back down to normal, and I haven't felt bad. I mean, the only time I even... I wouldn't say that I felt bad, except that I was freezing. Yeah. You know, um, but I didn't feel sick even then, except that that's, you know, kind of a sign of having a fever when you, you know... When a normal temperature doesn't seem right to you anymore, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, then maybe something's wrong. But, yeah. Um, yeah, oh well. Well, you may have it, you may not, who knows. Yeah. Um, if I do, it stays like this. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, yeah, like one of the times it was in our house, that's all it was. With like what you're describing is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? It has gotten a lot warmer in my house since then, though. So uh, yeah. it's it's warmer outside today than it's it been in a little bit. Yeah. So. Um, so I'm, I'm not real concerned. Obviously you aren't either cause you're sitting no, right across from me. Right, yeah. When you, <laughs> and were... you didn't even ask me to wear a mask. No, oh, hell no. I didn't ask you to wear a mask. I would never do that. But if, if, I, if I was concerned the microphone with a mask, if on? I was concerned enough about you being sick to ask you to wear a mask, I wouldn't come over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and my only concern was if you were feeling well enough to do it. Like as long as you were well enough to record, I'm good with coming over. Yeah. I've felt normal all day. I'm um, not afraid of stuff like this. If I get sick, yeah. I get sick. But. Um, I've been lazy today, but it's Saturday and I'm often lazy. <laughs> yeah, you're not used to, yeah, this isn't a normal recording day. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I watched a movie and took a nap that, but that's, that's Saturday, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I watched uh, the conjuring. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I'd seen it before. Cause there were definitely like a bunch of parts of it where I was like, this seems very familiar. I don't remember. I've, I think I've seen that one, but I don't remember which one it is. Um, you know, some family of seven moves into a haunted house. Uh, sounds familiar. Kids are terrorized. They yeah. they bring the Warrens in. Yeah. Warrens? Yeah. Um, which are these really famous, uh, I don't know, what, paranormal investigators, maybe? That's probably the nicest term yeah. you could come up with for them the, uh, in the 60s and 70s that... You know, went and okay. investigated houses and uh, cleared um, them of the yeah yeah or yeah. got right. the church to or whatever yeah um so anyway it was it was fine it wasn't yeah uh, I I wish I had found something else instead after having watched it because I was like yeah I'm pretty sure I saw this before yeah and it's probably going to have as much of an impression this time as it did the first time <laughs> right. so, uh, a couple of years from now I'm going to be like did I watch this <laughs> yeah hmm, this seems interesting I wonder if it's any good yeah this seems familiar <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, funny so so have you got your free crack pipe in yet from the government oh no I heard that was BS though, but I hadn't looked into it myself. I don't know. I hadn't. I, I also hadn't. have not gotten my free uh, COVID tests from the government that oh, were yeah. supposed to. Oh, ours came in. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't gotten mine. We've, we've got our free COVID test that will absolutely never get used. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Uh, yeah, I won't be using them. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I ain't trusting no thing from that the government sent me to stick in my nose. Those made in me? China? <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I think it was. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me a bit. Definitely not sticking it in my nose, that's yeah. for sure. Well, I, you know, it would be convenient today. I hate to have to go in to a, my doctor Monday just to get a test to tell me that I'm fine. <laughs> that's your, yeah. Um, or to, to tell me that I'm sick because I'm, you know, I <laughs> feel fine. Because you're clearly not, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Well, so you started off as soon as you arrived at my house drilling me about whether my opinions had changed. On yeah. I mean, you think Russia's going to do it, man? Do what? Go into a Ukraine. No. I tell you, man, I don't know. I, I don't know one way or the other. The I've, the media was pushing it yesterday like I've never seen. When I found out we weren't going to record, I almost called you yesterday just to see where you stood on all of that because they were 
like I say, and not, I say the media, but the U.S. government is really who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Was really putting out all of the the attack is imminent. In, 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 what is it? Imminent. 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 Yes. Imminent. imminent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough one. Um, Inimitable. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be the U.S. and the U.K. governments that are pushing this right now. Yeah. Um, be- and, okay, I-, I think actually it goes back to what you were talking about when we, we spoke on this before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, the, the Germans and the French met with the Russians and the Ukrainians just like a week or two weeks ago yeah. and agreed to a ceasefire. Okay. All right. Good. They, they didn't invite the Americans. Yeah. Probably because they saw what the Americans did with the Iran deal. And we're like, you know, we're, we're not even going to get you <laughs> yeah. involved. Why even time. bother with y'all, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that the reason that the UK and the US are pushing this so hard is because the UK and the US both have leaders that are in trouble. Yeah, well, that's true. And, you know, even as I was watching that, you're absolutely right, because Boris Johnson is not in favorable shape right now. Yeah, the German <laughs> chancellor is brand new. He's got plenty of time. Yeah. And Macron is not in uh, not in a bad position, although I feel like he should be, but he's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the Biden's favor favorability ratings or approval ratings and it's what have you. Bad. Are terrible, yeah. and of course they've been well. And the truth is, while the the UK press has been has been pushing the Ukraine thing, some yeah. they've spent way more time talking about the parties in Downing Street over the last two years during the lockdowns. Oh yeah, that's that's the bigger news to them at home. Oh yeah. So hey, you know, I just don't anything think that they're he can really do to that distract. Yeah. yeah, is is a good thing for him right now. So that's mostly what I think it, it's about. Um, I, yeah, I just don't see. There's no benefit to Russia to yeah. do it. And if they had wanted to take those territories in Ukraine, they would have done it when they had in 2015 yeah. after the plebiscite when those when they when those territories asked asked to join. Yeah, yeah. Um, it yeah. So uh, there's no there's just no benefit to them now. Now, the other side of that is uh, you know my friend Nathan was asking me the other day. Um, why you know essentially why would we even get involved like he said there's no benefit to anybody yeah yeah i mean this shouldn't involve us at all no shouldn't but it is a huge benefit to some groups yeah um some special interest groups here in the u.s um primarily as we talked about last time uh the energy um producers in the u.s that want that market in europe that and not to have to compete with uh, Russian cheap Russian natural gas. Yeah. Um, and of course, as always, the military industrial. Oh, they always companies. benefit from um, stuff like that. Because even and, and and so there is some truth to what he says, and that nobody benefit. Nobody wants a war. Yeah. But the threat of war can be very lucrative. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, even if we're not going, we're still building up. Yeah. So, um, and you can, uh, you get a lot higher ticket items, um, when you're planning for war with a major power like Russia or China, um, than you do when you're, uh, when you're at war with a bunch of, um, you know, essentially pastoralists in rural Afghanistan. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the the tribal pastoralists just don't require the same kind of equipment that a war with a Russia or a China would be. You're not oh, you're yeah. not ordering brand new supercarriers to fight in landlocked Afghanistan. Yeah. But you are if you're planning to fight in China. Oh yeah. Um so and and even in China that would be a terrible idea. It's oh. probably more useful actually to fight in Afghanistan than to fight in China. In China it just becomes an artificial reef real fast. Um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, the the point is that they they can order a, some real big ticket items. They can push for really high budgets for a, a major power war. Yeah. yeah. And um, and I think that the military industrial complex has learned that over they they were trying to shift focus at the end of the cold war. They're like, Oh, well we've had this cash cow for all this time. What can we gin up to? I, I hate using that term because that term became so popular in the last two years for whatever reason. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, what can we, uh, 
what can we scare the government about so that they'll continue to spend money on us? Yeah. Um, and it became these little regional conflicts things uh, going on in the Middle East and in Africa and, and, and um, you know, Southeast Asia and, and wherever yeah. um, to, you know, just like little skirmishes that were going on all the time. And, and oh, but there's so many of them, we've got to keep funding really big. And I, I think that they... it didn't take them that long to learn like, wow, we just don't get the kind of money out of this yeah, that yeah. we did when we were talking about fighting the Soviet Union <laughs> yeah. um, or the PRC. Uh, so the the shift has been to, to push back into that kind of conflict. It just boggles my mind how like horrible of a person you have to be to be like one of the big sales reps or one of the big people mm -hmm. for, for these companies like that. That yeah. like, oh man, sales are down. We really need a good war to gin things back up. Yeah. Um, I just, it boggles. Cause like I take like, so in my job, like sales are a big part of what I do. And I take mm -hmm. a lot of pride when we have a good time, a, a good month or a good, whatever the measurement period is, you mm -hmm. know, for the particular one. Yeah. And, um, take a lot of pride in that. And I know that I've done something good when I know we've sold more. Like, I mean, that's not, I don't think to myself, oh man, we sold all this stuff, but all these people are going to die because I did it. Yeah. Like that's gotta be just, you, I guess you can push all of that aside, but I don't know how, man. Yeah. Well, I, and you know, my brother left a, a job that was a good high paying job selling weapons. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that wasn't the only reason there were a bunch of reasons that fed into that decision, but that was part of that it. That was a big part of it. I, Cause he discussed that with me at one point yeah. that, you know, you know, that's a, and, and that, that's part of what makes me think about that. When mm -hmm. we're talking about, you know, these companies are the ones that are pushing for these wars mm -hmm. and just being that person that's benefiting from that just feels so icky, man. Yeah. Parasites. Yeah. I Vampires. mean, truly, truly. Um, and, uh, the the other question that my friend had was like, okay, well, all right, that makes sense. I get that as a reason that these particular groups would want to go to war, but you can't get the American people on board just so that, you know, Raytheon can have better profits in the next quarter or whatever. I said, that's true, but you sell it to the American people the way they sell all the wars. Yeah. This is a humanitarian crisis. Yep. We've got to protect these people in Ukraine. The Russians are in there killing women and children and starving them out or whatever. Yeah. Um, whatever and, the lie is, because it's yeah. always a lie. But um, it's always the humanitarian But th But that's where they sell it is from the humanitarian angle. Yeah. yeah. And the truth is that um, the, the U.S. government doesn't care about those people. No. Not one bit. Uh, hey, so you can just take so many examples. Um why is it the American government was so concerned about this, the status of women in Afghanistan? Yeah. But they don't care about the status of women in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Well, or, and, and, um, the, you know, the, the, the stuff in Syria or Ukraine. Well, just to actually take Ukraine as an example. Oh, well, yeah. you know, these people are dying in Ukraine. Um, we've got to protect these women and children, say for this future conflict, maybe, yeah. um, you know, we got to protect these women and children in Ukraine. What about the women and children that were starving out in Yemen? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't care about them? <laughs> no worries there, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and the Afghanistan one's just funny to me because the whole reason we went into Afghanistan was not because the of women's rights yeah. in Afghanistan. But it's funny that war persisted for so long that that was by the end that's what that was the big thing. Like before we pulled out, that was the big push was oh, what are these people going to do when we leave? Yeah, and you know. there was a complete other focus. And if we had achieved our objectives without gaining full status for women or even better status for women, yeah. um, they wouldn't have cared. In the yeah. same way that if uh, if Abraham Lincoln had been able to resolve the Civil War without releasing the slaves, he would have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was not really his concern. It was a tool yeah. to get the job that he wanted done. Absolutely. And so... Um, and the U S government hasn't changed. <laughs> no, yeah. That. Well, they, I mean, it, it, like it is funny because that brings up a good point because a lot of times when you bring up stuff from the past and like mm -hmm. say, now we don't even have to go back that far. I mean, you're talking about like when we, um, the terror wars in the two thousands, you yeah. know, and you talk, but even when Until you go, last year, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you bring stuff like that up to some people and they're like, yeah, but that was a long time ago. That wouldn't happen again. And it's like it's the same people. Like it's yeah. and it does and the the priorities haven't shifted. Nothing mm -hmm. radical has changed with our government. I mean, just think of the in fact, you have a, a really good example over the last several months 
um, with the COVID thing. Now that it has become really clear that what they've been telling you for two years has not has turned out not to be true. Yeah. I mean, we'll even give them the benefit of the doubt and say that, well, they didn't know any better. They, you know, that the yeah. they had good reason to believe that masks work and lockdowns work. And so uh, and that would, you know, affect the spread of the disease and the number of deaths. And they were trying to protect you then. Yeah. But it's very clear now that it their the narrative and their um uh, the trust that you have in those institutions is more important to them than your health. Yeah. Because they're maintaining, they're like, they're sticking up in the face of, of all this evidence. They're still making the same claims. Yeah. Um, although there is a little bit of a shift, but it's, it's not, it's still not shifting away. Yeah. Exactly. They're still trying to maintain this idea that they have the answers. Oh yeah. Um, and, and it's in the face of things that have turned out to be detrimental. Oh, that absolutely. they're still pushing. Yeah, exactly. They don't so, care about you. No. Like your health, your well being is not important to the US government. No, and it's sure as hell not as important for these uh, military industrial complex, you know, however you want to phrase it. Like these groups, these lobbying groups that push for this stuff. Um, that was something that my mom was asking the other day. Well, you know, what about, I mean, when it comes down to a question of if you want to get involved in a direct conflict with the, uh, with Russia or with China. These are thermonuclear armed powers. Um, I don't believe, and I, and there's a question in my head about whether they believe yeah. that they can have a conflict, um, an extended conflict with either of these powers without it going nuclear. Yeah. Um, I think that there are probably some people there that believe that everybody understands how dangerous that is. And so nobody would ever do it. Yeah. I disagree with that. Yeah. Um, I think that at some point, uh, it'll escalate to that. Point. It'll escalate to nuclear. And, and yeah. I honestly, I think that the most likely scenario is that the U S uses nuclear weapons first yeah. because both China and Russia have, uh, have openly stated, and you can, take the word of their government or not, but they at least have openly stated a, a no first use policy. Yeah. The U S government has never agreed to a no first use policy. <laughs> yeah. They have always reserved the right to a and first we're, nuclear uh, strike. Yeah, And we we're the only ones by the way, who've executed a strike. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know. We're still the only, um, only nation that has used nuclear weapons against another nation. Yeah. And I think that they believe in tactical nuclear strikes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's just a little one. It won't actually prompt them to, to respond <laughs> in, in with a nuclear strike. Well, what, what, that's absurd. And the, just like you said before, once the bombs start dropping, there's no there's no putting that back in the bottle, and there's no de-escalating it. Like once, once those bombs start dropping, and they're hitting cities in the U.S., and, and even if they're not nuclear, mm -hmm. even if once they start dropping and things start getting real, because when was the last time we had a bomb dropped on any of our cities? Any kind of bomb? Any kind. Yeah, it would be World War II, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we're not—that's not something we're exactly accustomed to here in the U.S. Yeah. You know, I mean, if that if if we had a bomb bomb start dropping on the U.S., to think that the U.S. wouldn't respond nuclearly with the nuclear weapon is just absurd. I just, I don't, yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. I think that the, because we're like I say, these other, there are countries in this, on this, in, on the planet that are used to having bombs dropped on them mm -hmm. and we ain't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the, so I've been reading, um, Gareth Porter's book, uh, about the, the Vietnam war. Um, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, but it, it's he's talking about the balance of power issue yeah. and that the U.S. government and the Russian government, for that matter, were perfectly aware um, of the the asymmetry in uh, the nuclear powers of the two countries. Yeah. While they were openly stating that they were at parity yeah. behind closed doors, both countries knew that the U.S. Had, was far superior yeah. um, to the to the Soviet Union in nuclear power. Yeah. And so it. Um, it greatly expanded the options for the U.S. and uh, it allows the U.S. to get involved, like in Vietnam and yeah. Korea, being less concerned about Russians getting involved in those conflicts as well, yeah. because the Russians know that uh, a nuclear war is more devastating to them than it is to the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, it also limits the options of uh, the Soviet Union and um, the People's Republic of China in a way that 
that could make it more likely that they would use nuclear weapons. Yeah. Um, so this is a very dangerous game, and uh, and Joe Biden's brinksmanship up until at least up until the last day or so. Yeah. I mean, I you know I've praised him when he said, "Well, it depends on their level of incursion," you know, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. I like I, I appreciate that you know not being so absolutist and and at least like stepping away from the brinksmanship game. But this is a very dangerous game that they're playing. Oh yeah. 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 And he's even stepped even further back in the past day or so. Like really like, you know, yeah, we can't engage Russia directly, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I appreciate that because uh, like I say, that's at least, you know, it made me feel a little better him saying that, that we, we had no intentions to, to engage them directly in combat. Yeah. Well, and I, and I did, you know, the reason I brought that up partly is that, um, there is still a balance of power asymmetry. Yeah. Like the US is still more powerful than the than the Russian government, the Russian's military force or the People's Republic of China's military force. Yeah. Uh, We're the empire, man. Yeah. We're it. Like <laughs> But now both of those nations could deliver enough devastation uh in a nuclear war to end civilization at least in oh, the yeah. northern hemisphere. Yeah. Easily. Um, so it's, it's still a dangerous game because they're kind of backed into a corner to start. Mm -hmm. Um, but at this point, it's not like we could launch a first strike and, and eliminate any ability for them to do real damage to the United States. Yeah. It doesn't take much anymore. Yeah. The weapons are more powerful. Um, yeah. and there's a lot more and of them. And there's more of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I hope we continue to back away, but I, I'm not concerned about, about Russia yeah. attacking. Well, I don't know if they're going to attack or not. And they may, you may be right. They very well may not. But regardless, it's not any of our business and we just need to stay out of it. Yeah. You know. Um, I, I have listened to France 24 and RT. Um, and France 24, like I said, France just met with uh, Germany, Russia, and, the, and Ukraine to, yeah. um, to agree to a ceasefire. France is reporting this as the Americans are claiming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and RT has maintained the entire time that, the, you know, essentially what Putin has said, that they have no intentions of invading Ukraine. Yeah. And well, it, there's no benefit to him for it. So I, I don't know why he would. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's... It's the U.S. and the U.K. that are pushing this the hardest, this narrative the hardest. And the reason that they're doing it, I think, is to try and provide some uh, a political smokescreen for their leaders that are in trouble. Yeah. Well, that's that. I mean, I, I, I agree with all of that. That's definitely makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of that, I actually wanted to spend the most of the time here on uh, this exchange between uh, Ned Price of the State Department and Matt Lee, um, the 15-year AP reporter, who yeah. I have the greatest respect for. I really like Matt Lee. He's he's one of the old school journalists that still expects an answer when he asks a question, yeah, and he right. doesn't let it go, and yeah. he doesn't hear. And so this is like a five-minute exchange. Probably you've all heard at least segments of this. Um, I have broken it down into a bunch of clips uh, to address it one by one. Um, actually, do you think, uh, do you think when the episode's over, like after the, after the music, I should just play the entire clip? Let's do that. So we'll, we'll, you've got it broken up so we can kind of discuss parts of it yeah. in segments, but let's do that. So we'll do that on the podcast. And then after the music tonight, play it again at the end in its entirety, just yeah. in case people want to hear the whole thing in context. Yeah. I um, think that's a good call. Now I did cut it up in a way that I didn't. I didn't leave out anything. There yeah. was there was like a minute and a half of repetition that I yeah. that I considered leaving out, but I, I still left it in there. And so, yeah. um, but that'll give people an opportunity to to listen to it without us our opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, again, this is uh, this is Matt Lee. So Ned Price delivered information that um, that the Russians were. Um, not taking talk seriously and didn't want to, to uh, seek a diplomatic solution. And um, and it was obvious by actions they had taken it. So anyway, yeah. let, we'll just jump into it. So this is Matt Lee um, questioning him about that. 
And uh, here we go with the first clip. All right. So you said actions such as these suggest otherwise, suggest meaning they, they suggest they're not interested in talks and they're going to go ahead with some kind of a... What action are you talking about? One, the actions I've just pointed to. Uh, the what fact, action? What? The, the fact that Russia continues to engage uh, in disinformation well, uh, campaigns. You, know, you made an allegation that they might do that. Have they actually done it? Uh, what we know, Matt, is what we what I have just said that they have engaged in this activity, well, uh, in this planning well, activity. But, activity. But let me let me because because obviously this is not this is not the first time we've made uh, these reports public. You'll remember that just a few well, weeks I, ago. I'm sorry, you made, made, made what report public? If you let me finish, I will okay. tell you what report we made okay. public. Okay, so this is the the first part. Um, he's saying, that, you know, Russia has taken some actions suggesting that they're not interested in negotiation. And Matt Lee is asking a very reasonable question yeah. of what actions are you talking about? Yeah. Um, Be more specific. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, he says, well, the actions I just... I've just described to you. And, and so this starts a theme of this entire line of questioning, which is um, what you have given me is a statement, yeah. but you haven't given me anything. You're just, you're just saying something that's, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not helping here. Right. Um, and I don't know. Once you hear the whole thing, I think that, any of you that were at the State Department might think, you know, I would fire that guy, Ned Price, because he's terrible at this. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, he's backed into a corner, I guess, because they don't really have anything, is my guess. Yeah. Um, it, it it really is just an allegation. But um, but anyway, this is, he, he says to Matt, you know, if you just let me finish, I'll explain it to you. Okay, well, let's see what he has to say next. Here it comes. Uh, we told you a few weeks ago that we have information indicating Russia also has already prepositioned a group of operatives to conduct a false flag operation in eastern Ukraine. So that, Matt, to your question, is an action that Russia has already well, taken. It's an action that you say that they have taken, but you have shown no evidence to, 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 to confirm that. Okay, and I think this is kind of an interesting little um, trick that Ned Price is pulling here because... Uh, he changes the subject a, a bit. Yeah. Um, it was kind of subtle because it's, I don't know, because it's still all about Russia and what Russia is doing. But um, you'll notice in the first clip, he was talking about disinformation that Russia was putting out there. And here he switches it to this idea of a, of a false flag attack that they're planning. Yeah. Uh, again, without evidence. With, yeah. Still haven't shown us anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but Matt's not going to let it go. Um, he's, you know, he wants to see the evidence. So let's uh, let's keep going. All right. And I'm going to get to the next question here, which is, what is the evidence that they play? I mean, this is like crisis actors, really. This is like Alex Jones territory you're getting into now. Um, what evidence do you have to support the idea that there is some propaganda film in the in in the making? Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, Gary, what evidence do you think that uh, Ned Price shows him? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm sure he's got the goods and it's fixing to get delivered right here, right now. Obviously, yeah. obviously. So let's uh, let's see what Ned Price's response to that is. Let's, let's hear the evidence. All right. I'm excited. Matt, this is derived uh, from information known to the U.S. government, intelligence information that we have declassified. I think you well, know. Okay, well, where, where is it? Where, where is this information? It is intelligence information that we have declassified. Well, where is it? Where is the declassified information? Oh, we're getting there. He's fixing to give us the declassified information. Yeah, I can feel it. Exactly. <laughs> the, the U.S. government has declassified some intelligence information to support these allegations that they're making. Now, I'm it? sure everybody listening, when I hear the words declassified information, I just assume that there's some website somewhere that I can go to see this information. It's been declassified. Right. So I, there should be somewhere I can go to see it, right? Yeah, exactly. Where is it? Well, I think and he's fixing to tell us, right? Exactly. He is. <laughs> I just delivered it. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, he, he just delivered it. He just <laughs> delivered the declassified information. The just declassified information was him standing up there and saying that they have declassified information. And so they are now able to tell you. <laughs> that the, you, the Russian government is planning false flag attacks in Ukraine as an excuse to invade. 
That's just insanity, man. <laughs> just yeah. I can't I cannot get over that. That's yeah. I just delivered it. <laughs> yeah. So this is a theme of this podcast about what what evidence is. Yeah. Um, right. This has come up many times. Yeah. And uh, you know, but maybe he can do better. There's like three more minutes left in this clip, so let's, I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. Right? This, yeah. this is. That um, website's coming. I, I can feel it. He's yeah, gonna he's going to give. Us... give a, he's going to give a link in just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> I just delivered it. No, no, you made a series of allegations and would statements. Would you Would you like us to print out the topper? Because you will see a transcript of this briefing that you can print out for but yourself. That's not evidence, Ned. That's you saying it. That's not evidence. I'm sorry. <laughs> what would you like, Matt? Okay, so. Matt has the right of it here, <laughs> uh, obviously. Um, him saying something is not evidence. Yeah, right. right? Um, I, I, <laughs> I cannot believe he went as far as to say, I'll give you a printout of this transcript yeah. <laughs> so, you can, so you can read it. So like, you, you can read me responding to your question. Yeah, yeah. that is. Um, uh, we'll print out the topper for you. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, sure. Um, then it becomes evidence once you print it out, right? Right, right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> If it's written down, yeah, all right, it's evidence. Um, now, my, I think my favorite part of that, though, actually, is how flabbergasted Ned Price seems to be that Matt Lee isn't just accepting that as evidence. Yeah, like, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> I just right. told you. What do you want? All right. Um, well, let's let's see what he wants. Let's find out. I, I would like to see some proof that you that 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 that, that, that you can show that that. Matt, you have that, been that, that shows you, that 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 you, shows that the Russians are doing this. Ned, I've been doing this for. a I long know that time. was my point. As, you as, you as have you, know. you you have been doing this for quite a while. You know I that have. when we declassify intelligence That's information, right. and I we do so in, in a means in we do and so I, and, we do so with an eye to that, protecting that sources and methods. Is not going to fall. I, I remember a lot of things. So where, where where is the declassified information other than you coming out here and saying? All right, this is personally my favorite part yeah. because because basically what he's saying is you've walked out here and lied, or saying you as in the government mm -hmm. has walked out here and lied year after year after year over thing over thing because if mm -hmm. you listen closely, he brings up WND in Iraq yeah. and Kabul's not going to fall, like all of these things that the government has clearly misled us about. Mm -hmm. and, but this time we're supposed to just take them at face value? Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. yeah. Show me something. You, if you're going to come out here and make a statement, especially with the nuclear power, that they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing, you're gonna, we're, I'm going to need a little more than, hey, dude, this is what's going on. Yeah. Well, and that is one of the themes of uh, Matt Bovard's – or. Jim Bovard, sorry, Jim Bovard's. I got Matt on the brain. Yeah. Matt Lee here. Yeah. Um, Jim Bovard's book, uh, Attention Deficit Democracy, which I recommend everybody read. It's no, yeah. it's hilarious in a lot of ways, and well, like this clip, it's hilarious <laughs> and terrifying at the same time. Right. Um, but you know, one of the themes of the book is that the the government has a terrible track record yeah. in terms of telling the truth. Yeah. Um, the government lies over and over and over again. Yet for some reason, people can find out that they've been lied to by their government and still can like continually Continue trust, trust the next, them. uh, the yeah. next, the next made. lie. Yeah. yeah. Just bite right on into the next lie. And the, the whole idea, I think he was talking about methods and sources and yeah. stuff like that. Um, he, he, yeah. This is something that comes up a couple of times in these clips actually, um, is that he, you know, he's like, well, you know that when we declassify information, we do it with an eye to protecting sources and methods. Um, and, there's something that I would like to point out here is like the media uses it all the time. And I don't know why the government can't yeah. do the same thing and just say from unnamed sources. Yeah. Yeah. We got and, information from unnamed sources. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can always blur whatever it is you need to like, you, but give us something more than some guy standing out here saying it. Yeah. I know? mean, because if you're saying that, well, I can't tell you where the information came from, came from because it may, um, compromise, uh, sources and methods. Well, if you just rely on unnamed sources, it's no different. Yeah. I mean, because if the information itself can compromise sources and methods. You just gave it out anyway. It doesn't <laughs> exactly. I mean, right? it, it doesn't make any difference. And so yeah. And then he's 
you, you have to listen closely because they are talking over each other. But Matt Lee says, yeah, I remember a lot of things. I remember WMDs in Iraq. Yep. I remember that Kabul is not going to fall. Um, and he makes a, a very reasonable uh, request, which is that I need more than a statement on these things yeah. to accept it. Absolutely. Um, well, so the... <laughs> The next part of this is my favorite part of the clip. All right. So um, Here we're we gonna, go. we're going to play that a little bit, and then we'll do the the full thing. All right, Matt. I'm sorry you don't like the format, uh, but we it's have declassified. It's not the format; it's the content. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the format; it's the content. Yeah, <laughs> that might be a show uh, title. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's yeah. the content. It's the content. It's, it, it's not the format, it's the content, it's too long a title. But anyway, um, yeah, that's my favorite part of this. And and you can <laughs> this is the point. This is this is why I like Matt Lee so much. Yeah. Um, is that he he's not te- he's not letting this go. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> dug in. Yeah. yeah. Um and uh and that's just that's just a great comment. It's not the format, it's the content. Yeah. Um so it continues from there though. All right. Matt, I'm sorry you don't like the format, uh, but we have declassified. It's not the format; it's the content. I'm sorry you don't like the content. I'm sorry you. I'm sorry you are doubting the information that is in the possession of the U.S. government. What I'm telling you is that this is information that's available to us. We are making it available to you uh, in order uh, for a couple reasons. One is to attempt to deter the Russians from going ahead with this activity. Two, in the event we're not able to do that, in the event the Russians do go ahead with this, to make it clear as day, to lay bare the fact that this has always been an attempt on the part of the Russian Federation to fabricate a pretext. Okay, so there's there's a bunch of things to say about this particular part. Um, the, <laughs> the I, I guess the attitude in this is like, how dare you doubt me? Yeah, how dare you, how dare you question the government yeah. who has never lied to you in all of its history? Right. <laughs> um, and it's... Is one of those things is like uh, he says, uh, "I'm sorry you doubt the information that's in the possession of the federal government," and I don't think that that's it at all. And I think if Matt had gotten the the chance to react to that, or if I'd have been sitting there, I, I would have said, "It's not that I doubt the information in the, in the possession of the federal government. I it's that I doubt the information is in the possession of the federal government." <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Like, um, and. Uh, the the other part of this though is that he says you know this is a this is about deterrence we think that if we release this information to you it'll discourage the russians from continuing whatever their plan is yeah. um there's another side of that uh it could also be a signal to us allies to attack russians because we can now blame it on the russians themselves and this false flag attack yeah um are our own agents that are out there ready to do a false flag attack. Yeah. This could be a signal to them. Now's the time. Yeah. This like, is when we want it. This is, the, yeah. yeah, this is the moment. Um, because we have set up this narrative so that now any attack on, um, on Russians, uh, is obviously the false flag attack that we've been warning you about that they were setting up as a pretext so that they could invade. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> And, well, I mean, I, I don't know that I have to, to stress this particularly, but this is exactly the kind of, of signal that, that it can be used. Yeah, um, absolutely. This, this, this is a way, like, through media is how intelligence agencies um, communicate information to... Um, to people on to the ground. To operatives, and yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, anyway... Um, so the the next, this is a long clip. This is like a minute and a half, um, and it's it's included just for completion's sake. Uh, there's a lot of repetition in this, but um, I mean parts of it are kind of funny. So yeah. I, it's worth listening to. Yeah, finish um, it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then and then there's another important clip at the end. But this is there's there's really nothing in this clip that you haven't heard already. Yeah. But I didn't want to cut out a, a big section of this exchange. All right. So, very cool. Yeah, but you don't have any any evidence to back it up other than what you're saying. It's like you're saying we think we 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 have information the Russians may do this. 
but you won't tell us what the information well, is. That, and then when, when, that, when you're that, asked... That, that is the idea behind when, deterrence, Matt. When, when, that is the idea behind asked, deterrence. And when it is asked, our hope that the Russians don't go forward with this. when the information is, you say, I just gave it to you. But that, that's not what... You, you seem not to not understand... You seem not to no, understand no, no, the Matt, idea of deterrence. Understand. We are you trying to not deter to the, the Russians from moving forward with this type of activity. That is why we're making it public today. If the Russians don't go forward with this, that is not... Uh, ipso facto, an indication that they never had plans to do so. Uh, but then it's unprovable. <laughs> I mean, my God, what is the evidence that you have that suggests that, that, that the Russians are even planning this? Matt, you, I mean, I'm not you, saying that they're not, but you just come out and say this and expect us just to, to, to believe it without you showing a shred of evidence that it's actually true. Other than when I ask, or when anyone else asks, what's the information? You said, well, I just gave it to you, which was just you making a statement. Matt, you said yourself, you've been in this business for quite a long time. You know that when we make information, uh, intelligence information public, we do so uh, in, a, in a way that protects sensitive sources and methods. You also know that we do so, we declassify information only when we're confident in that information. Wait, okay, this is yeah. also the point where I think Ned Price is finally losing his temper. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But the, you know, the one part that's really of note there is when he says, and if nothing happens, that's not proof that there wasn't uh, a plan for things to happen, yeah. which is true. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to show some kind of evidence. And that's, uh, yeah, it's just absurd, man, that we're just going to take this on face value. Like, mm -hmm. you know. And then, he, you know, he goes back to sources and methods. But. I mean, this is this is really just like a recap of the whole thing by Matt Lee saying, all right, you claim that you have evidence, but the only thing that you're doing is you're telling us that you have evidence and that this is what the evidence says. You're not actually presenting evidence. And I, I think, you know, again, he doesn't finish the statement, but there's a point when they're when it's getting a little heated and uh, Ned Price says, uh, you don't seem to understand. And Matt Lee replies, no, 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 you don't seem to understand. And I think where he was going with that is like, what evidence is? <laughs> you don't know what evidence is. <laughs> yeah. No, that, I think that's exactly what he was getting ready to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> so, like I said, that was mostly just, uh, just for completion. The, the next part is the, the last clip in this. Um, and, uh, so we'll play this last little bit and, you know, we can discuss it some more, um, at that point, but, um, yeah, this is the last, this is the last part of this five minute, roughly exchange between <laughs> Matt Lee and Ned Price. Nice. If you doubt, if you doubt the, the uh, credibility of the U S government, of the British government, uh, of other governments and want to, uh, you know, find, uh, solace and in information that, uh, the Russians Solace? are putting out. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> that is for wanna, you to do. I'm not asking what, what the Russian government is putting out. And, and what, John, do you, what is it supposed to be? That seems like an awkward place for it to end. But the reason that it ends there is because now Ned Price just moves on to another journalist. <laughs> yeah, another journalist that isn't going to be as um, yeah as persistent. As, yeah, as, that's, that's going to really want answers to questions. <laughs> yeah, um, the 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 point to draw particular attention to in that last bit though is that okay we've reached a point where he doesn't seem to be able to shake him so what he does is he questions his loyalties yeah yeah he says oh well if you don't want to trust the information that the u.s government and the uk government again the u.s yeah. and the uk government he doesn't right. say look at what france is saying <laughs> right, right? <laughs> um but if you don't want to trust the information that's in the possession of the u.s and the uk government you want to take solace in what the russian government is putting out <laughs> yeah. And and Matt Lee asks uh, what I think is a reasonable question, like what does this even? What do you even mean? Yeah. Um, but what he means is that oh, you must be some commie scum. If you're not with us, you're against us. Exactly. That's I mean that's what he was saying. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you're not just going to accept what the U.S. government says, you must be an enemy. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, and that's a, a dangerous attitude for the the U S government to take. And yeah. there's a whole lot of like dangerous stuff that the U S government is, is doing these days. Yeah. Um, you gotta, you don't really have to look very far, but you really need to pay attention to the subtext of these things that are going on here, because this is a dangerous road that we're going down, yeah. um, towards a more and more authoritarian government. And yeah. of course we talk about this, things that are going on in this country all the time, like the January six trials and like all this stuff yeah. that, um, that is, 
it's is not- setting up a situation where it is um, what the U.S. government says goes, and anybody that questions it is disloyal, is a terrorist. Is yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's that's not what this country is about. Yeah. Like, I mean, this country is supposed to be about freedom. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's I mean, that's just what who we are. It's supposed to be who we are. Yeah. Uh, this this <laughs> this government was founded on the idea of questioning and overturning your government if yeah. you disagree with what they're doing. Exactly. Um, and uh, it it was built with for the express purpose that the government could never assert this kind of authority. Yeah. Um, it failed, obviously, yeah. but uh, which is the reason I am who I am now. <laughs> yeah. it's the reason I'm an anarchist now and not like a constitutionalist, right? Um, and uh, but uh, just think of uh, the Joe Rogan thing, right? Yeah. So, um, okay, fine. Spotify is a private company. Do what they want. Blah blah. blah. Sure. Um, but the the part that you have to look at is when Jen Psaki gets up there in front of the press and says, "Well, you know, we appreciate the steps that the that Spotify has taken." Um, about this issue, but we think that they can do more. Yeah. Okay. Remember what the subtext to that is, which is, you know, we have the power as the U.S. federal government to shut down your business. Yeah. Yeah. That was, they can <laughs> shut down Spotify today if they want to. Yeah. Um, we can come up with plenty of reasons to put an end to your business. Yeah. And so there's nothing we think you that can they do can about do it. more. Yeah. Is really a, a statement it's saying, a, hey, Spotify. Yeah. It's a threat. Watch your back. Yeah, it's a threat. Yeah. I mean, just call it what it is, you know? <clears throat> I, it's very mobster-like. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it goes back to Dave Smith's thing about uh, what the the federal government is, is a, yeah. um, is a mafia masquerading as a human rights organization. Exactly. And, and this is a perfect example. Like, uh, yeah. And, um, and then we've got this... <laughs> Um, do you have anything more about that? Because I wanted I to move on to the Biden thing. Yeah, um, let's go. Yeah. And, and this is just the last little bit because we're we're definitely running a little long tonight, which is kind of a shame. But because um, I feel like there's so much more that I want to say. Yeah. But uh, anyway, let's go on to the Biden thing. This is you know this is his him commenting on uh, the Second Amendment um, and you know telling his go to lie on this. Yeah. Um, here we go. All right to have a gun don't get the gun in the first place and again for any of the press any of the press listening this doesn't violate anybody's second amendment right there's no violation of a second amendment right we talk like there's no amendment that's absolute when the amendment was passed it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon you couldn't buy a cannon and when the this this uh, amendment was passed so no reason why you should be able to buy certain assault weapons, but that's another issue. All right. We've discussed this live before. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we have. <laughs> um, absolutely, you could buy a cannon at the time that the Second Amendment was passed. Yeah. Uh, as a private citizen or as a business yeah. or anything. I think even the New York Times or the Washington Post um, ran an article saying, well, actually... Um, you know, there's the part of the constitution that allows the federal government to, um, bring in privateers, yeah. w- which is essentially government sponsored piracy. Yeah. It's <laughs> in the 18th, 19th century, it was hard to take another ship by ship if you didn't if have, you cannons. have cannons. That was a <laughs> yeah. big part of that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so absolutely these business, like uh, merchant ships uh, had cannons. They were private businesses. There was like a, yeah. plenty of private ownership of cannons. Yeah. And I always talk about the guy in Kentucky whose name I can never remember, yeah. um, who, uh, was a, a prominent abolitionist in, a, in the, um, 19th century in a time when there weren't a lot of abolitionists mm. and he was having to defend his home against the local law enforcement, the local sheriff and so forth mm. um, because he was getting death threats because of his abolitionist views. And he had a cannon defending his house. Yeah. Um, and thank, th- thanks to John C. Dvorak on the no agenda show. I now got that, ha- got that guy's name too, which yeah. is uh, which is Cassius clay. Ah. Which it seems like a name that I shouldn't have forgotten since that was, <laughs> you know, uh, presumably uh, Muhammad Ali's given name, Cassius Clay, came from that because he didn't yeah. live far from oh. from this guy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so then I had the opportunity to go look this guy up. And yeah. it wasn't just his home he was defending with cannons. He had cannons at his business and cannons at his, his political offices <laughs> nice. as well yeah. um, to defend uh, himself against, you know, 
yeah. attacks by the local law enforcement. Again, like the yeah. the reason that he has the cans it, when you go back to the oh well you were really only supposed to have guns for hunting or whatever you know yeah that whatever worn out claim. line yeah, yeah. Um, no actually he had cans expressly to defend himself against his local government against his own government yeah. exactly um, so uh, but there's a part in there that I really wanted to um, to highlight and here it is all right. There's no amendment that's absolute. There's no amendment that's absolute. Now, this really bothered me at first. Yeah, I um, bet. Mm. Because the the amendments absolutely they were are absolute. They were written to be absolute. <laughs> yeah. Like so, that's, that was the idea behind the Constitution. Yeah. Like, so, um, I mean, you could go, and this is, this is a de jure versus de facto kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I have to agree with him that no amendment is absolute de facto, yeah. but de jure, they were supposed to be. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you kind of want to go up to Biden after he makes a statement like that. No amendment is absolute and say, well, what about the one forbidding slavery? Yeah. That's right. not absolute. There are yeah. situations so, where you can have slavery. <laughs> right. Um, but the answer is, yeah. yeah, there are. There are in this country right now. Yeah. Um, they still haven't gotten rid of cons- conscription. Yeah. Like the draft is, is slavery. That's, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you, you have essentially forced labor in prison. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, there's still slavery going on in this country. Yeah. Um, but then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, you know, of course it benefits him as a lifelong government employee um, to believe that no amendment is absolute because the amendments are all meant to restrict the federal government. Yeah. Absolutely. And so if no amendment is absolute, there aren't really any restrictions, restrictions to the on, yeah. on the government. So, yeah. And we've hit a point where there there really is no restrictions on the federal government. Yeah, like, you were telling me you had a discussion with somebody about this recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember. Recently, yeah, because it was it was a silly thing. But yeah, because I basically told him, I was like, yeah, the Constitution is nothing but a piece of paper. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, yeah, if, if you're depending on the Constitution to protect your rights, you've already lost. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't work. You know what protects your rights? You. The Second Amendment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. The <laughs> use of the Second Amendment, yeah. not the written piece of paper yeah. or whatever. But yeah. The, the guns I possess because of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so that's, you know, I think that that's a good point to end on. Not, you know, buy guns. But um, yeah. just I don't that, know. That's a pretty good point, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like. Yeah. Um, I, but the point that I wanted to make is uh, that, yeah, the Constitution is just a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, the enforcement mechanism of the Constitution is all of us. Yeah, exactly. You have to, you have to make sure that you have to prevent your government from overstepping its bounds actively. Absolutely. Yeah. And and so it's up to all of us. Like if we don't want to continue to slide down into this authoritarianism. Well, and it's our fault that we've gotten to where we're at as a country. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can complain about the government overreach and how big the government is and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is, and I don't mean anybody individually, I mean us as a country has let this happen. Yeah. And the further it goes, the harder it is to roll back. We already see that now. Mm-hmm. Um, so the further we let them go, the worse it's going to get. Things are not going to get better until we start rolling this government back yeah um there's uh, you know it's just what it is but Mm -hmm. but to depend on the piece of paper that and that's what irritated me with that guy is that like this piece of paper absolutely protects my rights garbage yeah (laughs) garbage (laughs) um anyway yeah uh so i guess that's that um anything else you want to add i don't think so all right um so Ooh, next week's going to be tough. Okay. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I've got inventory. So, oh. um, yeah, it's going to be hard for us to get together to record a together podcast. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. Just saying it's going to be tough. Oh, I had a really good idea for a topic, too, well, that I'll tell you about after. We all right. Recording. <laughs> you don't want to do um, no teasers here? <laughs> no, not really. Okay. Um, we'll have to see. It. Well, okay. Um, like... The question is, how would things be different uh, with a more libertarian um, government? Okay. Over the last two years. All right. Oh, over the last two years. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. That was that's an interesting thought experiment. <laughs> yeah. So um, I thought that might be a fun thing for us to talk about, um, 
or yeah. maybe it'll be just a fun thing for me to talk about. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I would hate to miss out on that one. That yeah. sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, one way or another, because then the week after that is the uh, convention. Is, yeah. Um, so, oh, for anybody interested, um, the Libertarian Party of Alabama has a convention starting the 25th. Yes. Um, the 25th in Dothan, Alabama. Yep. Um, which is kind of middle of nowhere, <laughs> but, um, which is good since it's going to be a bunch of libertarians. <laughs> yeah. So we, we can, it's harder to get in trouble in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, all are welcome really. Yeah. And they're going to have, uh, um, all kinds of guests, big names in the LP. I don't know exactly who all's coming, but, yeah. um, Afro man's supposed to be there to put on the show. Is so, that a big name in the LP? Yeah, it's not a big name in the LP, but it's a big name for people of my generation. <laughs> um, so I, I heard Tommy Chong. I heard that too. Yes. Yeah, so that's to be once there. again, another, another big name going to be there. So, um, anyway, and it's it, going to be a bunch of libertarians. You're going to have a good time. man. Yeah, dude. We party. <laughs> like, yeah, we have, a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we, we, the, the party parties. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and hopefully it gets business done too. But <laughs> yeah. Well, we, usually we use, yeah, it's usually pretty contentious, but we usually get business done. <laughs> um, so, but it'll definitely be a fun time. So if you, you know, have the weekend and you can get to Dothan, uh, you should. I encourage it. Yeah. Um, beyond that, uh, you know, I, I, we expect to get another recording out next week. Uh, you know how it goes is sometime between Wednesday and Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We should show up in your podcast. (laughs) Wednesday and Sunday. We really need to get more consistent. Like that would help us a lot. Um, but I, I'm just not that consistent a person it's anyway. Been, it's tough. We're busy people, man. We got a lot going on. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we plan to be back in a week-ish. Um, and in the meantime, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, or YouTube. Um, what else? Oh, uh, there's, of course, the website. You can always go to the le- website at thelibertymike.com. Uh, if you want to contact me, my email is michael at thelibertymike.com. Um, you can send me anything. Uh, questions, comments, articles, whatever. Um, I'm happy to hear from you, and uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. <laughs>
I, I would like to see some proof that you that 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 that, that, that you can show that that Matt, you have that, been that, that shows you, that 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 you, shows that the Russians are doing this. Ned, I've been doing this for. A I long know that time. was my point. As, you as, you as have you, know. you you have been doing this for quite a while. You know I that have. when we declassify intelligence That's information, right. and I we do so in, in a means in we do and so I, and, we do so with an eye to that, protecting that sources and methods. Is not going to fall. I, I remember a lot of things. So where, where where is the declassified information other than you coming out here and saying? Matt, I'm sorry you don't like the format, uh, but we have declassified. It's not the format; it's the content. I'm sorry you don't like the content. I'm sorry it's you. I'm sorry like you are doubting just... the information that is in the possession of the U.S. government. No, I... I, what I'm telling you is that this is information that's available to us. We are making it available to you uh, in order uh, for a couple reasons. One is to attempt to deter the Russians from going ahead with this activity. Two, in the event we're not able to do that, in the event the Russians do go ahead with this, to make it clear as day, to lay bare the fact that this has always been an attempt on the part of the Russian Federation to fabricate a pretext. Yeah, but you don't have any any evidence to back it up other than what you're saying. It's like you're saying, we think we, we, we have information that the Russians may do this. But you won't tell us what the information well, is. That, and then when, when, that, when you're that, asked... That, that is the idea behind when, deterrence, Matt. When, that is the when, idea when behind asked, deterrence. And when it is asked, our hope that the Russians don't go forward with this. when what the information is, you say, I just gave it to you. But that, that's not what... You, you seem not to not understand, you seem not to no, understand no, no, the Matt, idea of deterrence. <laughs> we are trying to deter the Russians from moving forward with this type of activity. That is why we're making it public today. If the Russians don't go forward with this, that is not... Uh, ipso facto, an indication that they never had plans to do so. Uh, but then it's unprovable. <laughs> I mean, my God, what is the evidence that you have that suggests that, that, that the Russians are even planning this? Matt, you, I mean, I'm not you, saying that they're not, but you just come out and say this and expect us just to, to, to believe it without you showing a shred of evidence that it's actually true. Other than when I ask, or when anyone else asked, what's the information? You said, well, I just gave it to you, which was just you making a statement. Matt, you said yourself, you've been in this business for quite a long time. You know that when we make information, uh, intelligence information public, we do so uh, in, a, in a way that protects sensitive sources and methods. You also know that we do so, we declassify information only when we're confident in that information. Yeah, you if you doubt, if you doubt the, the credibility of the U.S. government, of the British government, uh, of other governments, and want to uh, you know, find uh, solace and in information that uh, the solace? Russians are putting out. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> that is for wanna, you to do. I'm not asking what, what the Russian government is putting out. And, and what, John, do you mean, what is it supposed to mean? 